everyone. Welcome to episode two of Brewing with Becky, Tack Talks. I am here at Tack Coffee House in the Manchester City Center, uh, just enjoying a brew by myself. Some of my teammates are here, but they are not over here with me. Um, I'm going to do this episode on my own. Um, I had some guests set up that ended up falling through, so we are going to have a guest on in the next episode, but I thought I would take the time to answer um, some of your questions and chat a little bit more about, you know, what's going on here at City and with the national team and just me in general. So uh, to introduce my coffee, today I went with a just simple filter batch brew, uh, just normal filtered coffee for all my people that are original and just like normal coffee. Um, Shout out to you because keeping it original it's the best little bit of milk sometimes almond milk sometimes oat milk depending on the mood my mood today was normal milk so i'm loving it it's given me all the energy i need for for this episode um and i'm hoping you like it so like i said last week if you are in the manchester city center area come check out tech coffee house it's a great place to get a coffee um and and just to hang out So um, last week we had Ellen White and Pauline Bramer as our guests, so I just wanted to say a huge thank you to them uh, for helping make that episode, the first episode, um, awesome, and I really hope all of you listeners enjoyed that episode and hearing a bit from their perspective and and their journeys and and what they've gone through in their football careers. So really looking forward to having some more guests on the podcast, um, and I hope you are too because we're going to have some really, really great people on to chat about all kinds of things, but today, um, like I said, I wanted to take the opportunity to answer some of your questions, Um, and I got loads of good questions, so thank you to everyone who sent me your questions. That's always awesome, makes my job a whole lot easier, Um, but first of all, it's Christmas time. It's absolutely insane to me that it is already December 13th. Like, where has December gone? I have an awesome, beautiful Christmas tree behind me. The Christmas vibes in this place are high, high Christmas vibes, and I'm really liking it. Um, Christmas is one of my favorite times of the year. It's one of the few times where my whole family gets to get together. I get to go back home to Colorado, which is really cool, and I'm going in exactly a week. So I'm pumped. Got one game to take care of business this weekend, but after that, it is home free for the holidays to have a little rest and recovery, uh, enjoy some awesome time with family, and of course, delicious Christmas food. If you love food, I'm speaking to you. So, um, lots of questions that I received were about um, life in England and uh, what it's been like for me here. Uh, some of my highs and lows from last year. Um, Yeah, so I think we'll start there. Life in England, where do I begin? It's really different than America. (laughs) If you've never been here, really different. Not different bad, just different. Um, Really cool culture. I really like the British culture. Um, Love the history that's in this country. But um, yeah, if I'm honest, it was a really difficult transition for me. I've been here for about a year and a half now, which is also crazy because in some ways it feels like I just got here. In other ways, it feels like I've been here for a really long time, which I don't think is a bad thing. Um, But I think the most difficult part of the journey was just having to adjust to living in another country, being on a new team, not knowing anyone when I got here, um, and then having that kind of expectation on myself to perform Um, You know, in a a new league, in a new uh, environment with different expectations. So that was difficult for me, but I'm also really thankful that I went through that because it's just helped me out loads for this year and and in my career. And I'm, uh, yeah, super pumped about where I'm at now and and my place in the club. And I'm really happy here. Um, But my highlight from last year, that's hard. So one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to come to Europe is because I wanted to, and England in particular, come to a team that wins trophies. And we won two trophies last year, which was awesome. We won the FA Cup and the Continental Cup, so both League Cups. 
which is difficult to do. Um, and we missed out on the lead by, by a few points. So we could have won the treble, but did the double, which was, was awesome. Uh, so I think, yeah, my highlight of last year was just playing in the Continental Cup final game against Arsenal. We played really, really well as a team. Uh, it went to PKs. We won in PKs. So that was amazing. Um, that was definitely my highlight from last year. And then I think my low of last year was just um, a lot of a lot of little moments, just moments in training where, you know, I was really frustrated with myself. Trying to get into, you know, a really talented team is difficult, uh, especially when the team's playing well. You can't really expect the personnel to change too much. Um, so that was difficult for me, but also just a huge, huge learning uh, for me. And you, you just got to work hard. Uh, and I know I try to do that all the time. So um, looking back, the lows from last year don't feel as low now because. Um, I got through them, which is, which is great. Uh, but the difference, uh, a lot of people ask me like, what's the difference between the NWSL and the WSL? Um, and other than like the obvious, the format's different. We play year round here, which I really like. Um, in the NWSL you play from like April to October and then have quite a long off season. So it's just different in, in that regard. Um, and I really like playing year round, um, just keeps you sharp all year and it feels like, like a full-time job, which is cool, which it is. Um, and, uh, a lot of the other questions I got were just around, how it worked for me coming up in the American system and because a lot of uh, European personnel are not familiar with, with, how, with how that works. So I'll try and, and talk through it. It's, it's a little complicated, uh, so I won't get into too much detail. But anyways, I grew up in Colorado, like a lot of you know from following my career. Uh, I played for Real Colorado. Shout out Real CEO. Love those guys. If you have kids in Colorado, put them with Real. Best club. Um, absolutely loved playing for Real. So I played uh, youth soccer, um, youth football, if you will, uh, till I left for college. So about 15, 16, I got recruited to play college soccer um, at Texas Tech. Again, shout out to all my Red Raiders, best university in the world. Uh, there was a couple other schools I was looking at, but Texas Tech was definitely the place for me. Um, I think the recruiting process can be really, really difficult for people. And I've had some questions in the past about how I navigated that. Um, and it, it's a difficult question to answer because I do think it's so personal and so individual to the athlete, to the student. I know that was a big thing for me. I wanted to go somewhere where I knew that I could um, have a good academic career while still, you know, giving so much of my time to playing, uh, which is difficult for a lot of student athletes to, uh, manage. So, uh, at Texas tech, I really enjoyed being a student athlete. It's difficult. You got to figure out how to manage your time to be able to succeed both on the field and in the classroom. And I think that's something that's really special about the university system in the U S is that, uh, you get the chance to, you know, play your sport, but also to get an education. And that's been really special to me. I have a bachelor's degree in media strategies. If you don't know what that is, uh, to put it in short terms, it's um, like broadcast media, public relations, um, visual media kind of all in one. Uh, so I was really interested in doing uh, sports broadcasting when I'm done playing. Don't know if, I, if I'll if i do that, but definitely something that, that I was interested in. So I went to college, uh, played four years at Texas Tech, won a championship there, which was really cool, a conference championship, 2015. Shout out to that squad. Um, uh, if I could go back to college, I would do it in a heartbeat. So much fun. One of the... Uh, best chunks of four years of my life. I like to think that the best years are ahead of me, but hey, maybe this year will end up being one of the best win three trophies. Who knows? Uh, so yeah, so I finished college, graduated, finished playing soccer, and I went to the NWSL draft where Houston drafted me, uh, and I went and played in Houston for two years, which was fantastic. Houston is such an amazing place. Um, made some really, really good friends there, lifelong friends, and then I got traded to New Jersey where I played for a year. 
um, a lot, a lot of learnings coming out of New Jersey. It was a tough year, I think, for everyone um, in in the club at that point. Uh, but yeah, just tons of learnings to take away. And um, yeah, so before the season was over in New Jersey, I ended up signing to come over and play at City, which has been incredible. And that's kind of a short version of my story and growing up in the US, USU system. Um, growing up in Colorado, so I was born in America, which a lot of people don't know, this gets really confusing. I was born in America, but I have dual citizenship with Canada. So I have uh, both Canadian citizenship and American citizenship. So I can play, uh, I am eligible to play, or was eligible to play for either the U.S. or Canada. Uh, so I played for the U.S. youth teams. Uh, I was on the under-18 national team and was on the under-20 team for a short amount of time before um, I got a call from the Canadian under-20 under national team coach uh, just saying, you know, we, we understand that you're able to play for Canada. Have you ever uh, thought about playing up here? And, uh, and I had said, no, not really. Um, and he invited me into camp, said, no strings attached. If, if you don't like it, then. And, you know, no hard feelings. You don't have to play for us. And I went and I absolutely loved it. I uh, got on with the girls really well from the start. And that was my journey with my, the beginning of my journey, journey with Canada. Um, played in the under 20 world cup that was in Canada, which was really cool. Um, and after that tournament, the head coach at the time, John Herdman had said, you know, we're, we want to invest in you for the long run. Uh, I want to cap you, which pretty much means he wanted to, um, have me play for the Canadian senior team so that I was locked in uh, to play for Canada, which was, you know, a decision that I had to make. But at that time, I was pretty sure that that, that was my going to be where my journey was going. So I made the decision and I had my first cap with the senior national team in November of 2014 against Sweden. So that's definitely something that I'll never forget. And yeah, I've been I've been with the Canadian national team ever since. Um, speaking of of, we have Olympic qualifying coming up in the new year, which is really exciting. Um, obviously, <laughs> seems crazy that we just had the World Cup and now we're about to have the Olympics, uh, but got to qualify first. So we will head to Texas at the end of January um, and start the qualification tournament. So the way that CONCACAF qualifies is, is through a tournament setting. So three group games, uh, a semifinal, top two teams out of each group go through. Uh, there's a semifinal and a final, and you have to get to the final to qualify for the Olympics. So it's quite competitive. It's quite tight only two teams go so we have Jamaica Mexico and St. Keats and Nevis I think is how you pronounce it apologies if I pronounce that wrong um, in our group so three tough games uh, we'll obviously want to do the best we can try and top the group and and just make it to that final and, and go from there qualify for Tokyo 2020 which will be just a, such a an amazing event it's just Un undescribable, indescribable, undescribable. I don't know which one. Uh, to to be a part of an Olympic Games, I was part of the team that won bronze in Rio in 2016, and it's just it's different than playing in a World Cup because at a World Cup, you are obviously it's football specific. That's the only sport that's playing in the tournament. When it comes to the Olympics, you've got athletes in so many other sports competing, and it's just a really cool thing to be part of um, a team that's part of a bigger team so uh, I really enjoyed that and I'm definitely looking forward to, to doing what I can to help the team qualify for the Olympics and then do my best to make uh, that roster um, when it comes time so I think I've hit most of the questions that people asked me on Instagram if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure that you do. Uh, all of the podcasts and vlogs will be on the YouTube channel, and we are working on getting the podcast onto Apple Podcast and Spotify just as soon as possible. Um, they'll be available on there, but obviously easy to listen on YouTube for now. Um, but let's check coffee. The reason why I'm here at this wonderful coffee house is because I have a passion for coffee. So, as much as I love coffee, I didn't start drinking coffee until I was done with college, which most people, I think, start drinking coffee when they're in college because they need to stay up all night and study. That was not me. <laughs> 
Uh, so I started drinking coffee when we went to Holland with the national team, and I could not for the life of me stay awake. I didn't like the taste of coffee. I didn't feel like I needed it, but my goodness, I couldn't stay awake. The time change was just horrendous. So I put as much milk and as much sugar as I could possibly handle in the coffee, and I was just drinking it to stay awake. And um, ever since then, I, I started using it for its caffeinated purposes, but as I've uh, started drinking more of it, I really do enjoy the taste now. Um, I really, there's not really a coffee drink I don't enjoy. I don't enjoy so much like the really, really sweet ones. I think at this time of year, everyone's into the pumpkin spice, holiday seasonal drinks. I'm not really that type of person. I'm more of just your traditional, like I said, filter brew coffee. Um, and what's amazing about being on this team is there is so many coffee lovers on this team. Um, and I will have more of my teammates on the podcast to talk about their love for coffee or lack thereof, because there are some people on the team that really don't like coffee, which just blows my mind. But speaking of, I'm going to have a really, really cool announcement to make hopefully in the next couple months. So stay tuned around coffee. I'm really, really pumped about something that we're working on with, with coffee. Um, another thing that people were really interested in hearing about was, um, my faith. So something that's really, really important to me. Uh, so I, uh, yeah, I'd love to speak about that for a little bit. Um, if any of you saw the feature that city did, um, on me, it was about a five, five minute video. Um, it's on their Instagram, IGTV, check it out. Um, if you want to, they did a really cool job featuring my passion for my faith, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, anyways, I grew up uh, Catholic, going to Catholic mass, went to a Christian high school where I kind of made my faith my own and, and to not get too deep into it. It's really important to me. Uh, you know, so much of, of what I believe in it is being, you know, being the best person that you can be. And for me, that has a huge impact on, on my career. Uh, and I think for anyone that would have a big impact on your career because with me I have so much interaction with with other people every single day um for me that's my teammates and my coaches and just treating them in in the best way possible so I think there's um so many situations that we that I get in every day where I'm faced with with a choice on how to how to treat someone and that for me is is where my my moral compass and my foundation of my faith comes in uh because I really want to treat everyone with love and respect um but it's also a challenging environment because it's a, it's an environment based on performance and I think that's a really difficult thing to maneuver sometimes because I don't want to be a selfish person but so much of the time you're focused on your own performance um and I think as athletes that we can get wrapped up in that quite a bit um but just having that awareness of you know it's not about me it's about something bigger uh my team but even bigger than that like I'm here for a purpose. I've been given this gift to play this game and to not play this game to the best of my ability or to work to the best of my ability is sacrificing the gift that I was given. So, um, it's, yeah, it's something that impacts my, my daily life. I, I go to church here in Manchester. I go to Vine Life. So, uh, shout out to the Vine Life family, the Jesus Culture family. If you are, again, in the Manchester area and interested, uh, check out Vine Life uh, services 10.30 a.m. on Sundays. Uh, it's an incredible place. It's done incredible things for me since I've been here and just have formed such an incredible community uh, through the Jesus Culture family. And I'm, I'm super excited about that and, and having that as uh, something away from home because that's really important to me is having uh, a church environment where I can go and feel like I'm at home and to get away from the football aspect of it, which just like I said, can just totally seep you up sometimes. Um, getting to church is is really important for me to reset and to remind myself of what's most important to me to me in, in, in my everyday, which is my faith. Uh, I'm definitely going to speak more to that. I, I wanted to dedicate kind of a full episode to that in particular. Um, just wanted to touch on it a little bit because I got loads of questions about it. Um, and lastly, I just kind of wanted to talk about what's next for uh, for City and, and kind of where we're at and where I'm at. Uh, I've been playing in a new position, which has been cool and challenging 
15 for me. I've been playing as a defender, which for anyone that knows me really well, is, is a big, big shock because I am an attacker. I like to score goals. Uh, but unfortunately, one of my teammates suffered an ACL injury and um, I slotted back into the right back position and, and I'm enjoying it. We're doing really well as a team. We've uh, had some unfortunate losses, um, but just we have such a good group of people around us that, that we, we bounce back uh, quite quickly uh, from from those losses. So we have one more game uh, in 2019, which is nuts. I can't believe that that the year is almost over. It's gone by so fast. So many crazy, incredible things have happened this year. There's been disappointment, tears, so much joy, so much excitement, and I just really hope that that follows into the new year. Um, but we play one more game on Sunday, and then we go into the Christmas break um, for, for a few days, about 10 days, so it would be great to get some rest and recovery time with family, uh, and then we're back in for the new year with a game right off the bat. Uh, we've got important league fixtures and then uh, the Continental Cup quarterfinals will happen so uh, a trophy that we want to retain from last year uh, that was like I said one of my biggest highlights from last year and then uh, the FA Cup will start up so it's going to be a really really busy second half of the season but we're excited we're prepared um, and looking forward to it and then obviously within that um, I've got Olympic qualifying so it's going to be a busy time uh, it'll be really great to start it off with the holiday season, uh, get some time with, with family, um, and yeah, it should be great. I just want to say, for all you podcasters out there, it's really difficult to sit here and just talk to a microphone. Um, I hope I'm not boring you all just hearing my own voice. I really struggled with what to talk about, uh, but I hope this has been sufficient. Definitely not as exciting as having my um, my good friends and teammates on, but like I said, there'll be lots of, of fun guests. Um, this is, yeah, something that's, that's really new to me. So I've uh, gone out on a limb, made myself a little bit uncomfortable with the vlog and the podcast, but I'm hoping that some really great conversations come of this. Uh, we obviously had a really great conversation last week. And just so all of you know, I'm not, I'm not interested in all of these conversations being about, being about football. Um, I want it to be about important topics and important conversations and, and that's the goal of the podcast. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's gonna be gonna be a good time. Uh, I'm gonna try and get Karen Bardsley to come over here because she is in here, and I think everyone needs to say hi. Bizzle, Karen, Kimmy. No, come here. She's coming. Come say hello. Um, come on this side so so the camera can see you. Oh, it's recording. Yeah. Yep. Oh, she's joining me. What a joy. What a joy. Do I need to put my headphones on? Nope. Look who it is. Hello. Hello. You show them Godzilla. Uh, what? Godzilla. Oh, there is Godzilla. I said there's loads of fun Christmas decorations. I don't know if Godzilla's very Christmassy, but um, we're gonna turn this so she can um, come closer to me. I was just saying it's really difficult to talk to the talk to the microphone on my own. Yeah. I, what did you? What, what catch me up? What are you I've gone about? through loads of interesting, I would hope, conversation topics, conversational topics. I was uh, doing some Q and A okay. from some questions that people asked me on Instagram. Uh, about life in England. Oh, right. So we've got another person with with no uh, British accent. <laughs> That's not what I was going to say. Um, yeah, so we were just chatting, but obviously... Um, you are in recovery mode I am. from from an injury, and she's smashing her rehab. I am. Um, just a smiley face to see every day. So, um, how are you feeling? Uh, yeah, I feel good. Um, 
I wasn't expecting to talk about that. But yeah, I, surprise! I feel I feel good. Um, I feel like I'm getting stronger. I feel like the pitch is getting closer. Yes. I started handling um, training like the other day, didn't I? Yeah, she did. Saw her so out on the pitch. You saw me in my my brand spanking new gloves and boots that were the very, brightest boots very ever. Bright. So, but no, it was good to be on the pitch, and it was just nice to be in the same place with all you guys at yeah, once. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we miss you. Um, someone else is getting to go back to uh, America for Christmas. Well, America. The America. Yeah. The U.S. of A. That's right. I'm going to um, go to California she's going, to see my parents. Going back, back to Cali. I'm going, going, back, back, back. back to Cali. <laughs> wow, we can sound just... <laughs> <laughs> so just like the song. Um, so Call me Biggie. Biggie I don't Bart. know why British people. This is a gross generalization yeah. because I've just had a few people say, Be "Careful, where are you going for for Christmas?" And I'm like, "Oh yeah, family's in Colorado." They're like, "Oh, it's hot there, right?" And I'm thinking, you know, no, obviously there's. I don't. I didn't have good geographical knowledge of of England before I got here. Ooh, just hit the microphone. Um, don't have very good geographical knowledge of well decent of the rest of the world but I guess with America being so big it's not it's not a surprise in Colorado it's not one of those places that you hear about all the time but I was like no it's gonna be covered in snow no. the perfect white Christmas I think people sometimes confuse Colorado and California maybe you is know, that true there's some seas let's get some feedback on that let me are know you, what you guys are think are you live though? yeah oh no 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 not live oh. no 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 <laughs> not like, live 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 well, let's but not ask live, the live. people <laughs> <laughs> not live life but uh life right in the sense that we are living recording in real time <laughs> <laughs> we are alive in this place so um i i shared about my love for coffee yes, uh, yes the reason that we're doing this podcast in this awesome establishment is for the love of coffee so and people and yeah people obviously, obviously. i'm sitting i was sitting here by myself so that was oh, really yeah, part of it. but now that there's a person with me for the love of coffee and the love of people but for the love of good conversation. You should call it that. For the love of coffee. For the love of coffee. I was saying, this just popped into my head. I know you're kind of like leading us into maybe explaining to you why I'm interested in coffee. Yes, indeed. But um, when you first told me about like it was gonna, what were you gonna call it? Oh, it's called it's called brewing with Becky. Oh. Tack talks. Tack talks like TED talks. Yeah, kinda. Well, I was kind of thinking, you know, like Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Right. And they had that coffee talk. What are you about to say? Yeah. Um, I was going to say, why did you call it? Let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's super clever. The coffee talk. The coffee talk. The coffee talk. The coffee talk. Should we just Karen talk? Bersley. Should we just talk like we're from like New England New York. for a while? Give me a hot dog. Yeah. Or why don't you go oh, combining it with like Boston? Give me your khakis. Why don't you go pack your can? Have a yard. A yard. Yard. A yard. Have a yard. <laughs> Coffee talk. <laughs> what were you just saying? Water. Water. Give me some water. So water. that's the best test, isn't it, for Boston accent? That's not that bad. Pack. Pack your car. On Harvard Yard. <laughs> what? Harvard Yard. Oh. Stop it. I thought you said half a yard. I was Harvard like, Yard. Oh my gosh, I just realized I forgot to pay for my barking. <laughs> oh no. Wait, I got another idea. Have you done the, um, have you done the space ghetto yet? The what? Space ghetto. No. Okay. So for all you people out there that want to try a Scottish accent, oh. that have an American accent. I'm really bad at Scottish accents. All right. Well, this is going to teach you. Okay. We've gone from injuries to well, yeah. trying to talk about coffee. I didn't really want to talk about accents. injuries. That's though, fine. So. <laughs> Massive we, segue. We, we checked that box. <laughs> box checked. On to accents. <laughs> this um, has gone somewhere I did not expect. Well, look who you invited to come and sit down with I you. mean, you came in here and I was like she's got to get over here you came in here you came in here um, and I said you got to come over so Scottish accent okay, Scottish accent this is so you can assimilate into Kaz's world good word by the way Kaz is Caroline Weir That's for right. all you listeners Scottish gal Scottish Kaz Scottish Kaz she likes Mac. her haggis <laughs> and her iron brew um, does she like haggis I don't Question. I don't know if she likes iron brew I'll ask either, her tomorrow but um Okay, so you say space. Space. Ghetto. But say it like you would say it with a normal space American ghetto. action. Right, okay. So space ghetto. Space ghetto. So what you're actually saying in a Scottish accent is spice girl. 
Space girl. So you say spice girl. Girl. <laughs> Space girl. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, you learn something new every day, don't you? Uh, that's Space gotta, ghetto. That's got to be one of the hardest accents to do. Ghetto. Yeah. Uh... We're not. I'm, I'm gonna practice my English accent before I do it on the podcast. I, I don't. Mine is very poor. Every once in a while, I would call mine a transatlantic accent. Every once in a while, she uses big words. Well, it's I just the space between continents, isn't it? <laughs> the space. The spice ghettos. Wow. Love Shout it. out to Matt. You know, Dave Matthews. Dave Matthews band. Yeah. Great music. Fantastic. Music. Also, I love country music. It's not very well received over here. <laughs> I got friends in low places. places. <laughs> hey, y'all. We're on a whiskey. <laughs> mm, it's Chase about, is like, my blues away, and I'll be okay. Why, why is it always about, like, dogs heartbreak and, and like, lots of love jeans. songs? Jeans. Like, yeah. blue jeans. Well, yeah. Yeah, blue jeans and like Jayco and Barefoot Blue Jean Night tune. And what about uh, the one where he spills something on his shirt? Oh, Southern Boy, Southern Boys, Tim McGraw. Yeah, wait, how does it go? Uh, I got a barbecue stain on my white t shirt. She, she was killing me, killin me in that mini skirt. It was terrible. Sipping rocks, <laughs> sipping, sipping something on the river by the railroad tracks. <laughs> we should have a. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I used to watch that program called uh, the, the Singing Bee, and it was like a spelling bee, but like singing. Oh, right. So you would, um, there'd be a song that would play, and then the song would cut off, and you'd have to finish the line oh, of the song. I like we that. should definitely do that one I day. I like the sound of that. Country music uh, um, style, but people on this team probably wouldn't be very good at that. Probably yeah, also would say no if I asked them to do yeah, it. Probably. I don't know why country music is so not well received by this team. Well, I feel like people don't really get me, you know? They just they just want to listen to my country music in the in the gym and I just can't. I just think there's no kind of cultural equivalent. It's true. It's not that I'm although there is some great country music concerts that come to Manchester. You're going to have to start dragging people like I, I drag people to Book of Mormon. Great show, by the way. If you haven't seen Book of Mormon, great show. I like it a lot. I liked it a lot. It was but, funny. Yeah, that was the thing. It's like, you got pickup trucks, you got your jeans, your lifestyle stuff, you got your boys talking about girls, girls talking about boys, you got guns. Uh, what else do country singers sing about? Lots of things. Mostly love. I listen to the love songs. I love, oh, I love love. I love love. I love, love songs. Love, love, love. Oh, <laughs> she's got a lovely voice. Maybe no, we should no, just no, get her to no, sing no. for the podcast. Oh. Um, what did you order? I got a filter batch brew today. Just went for the original. Batch brew. A batch brew. Hi y'all, I got a batch brew. So can with you, some milk. Can you explain to the listeners what you learned about coffee? What I had learned. Yes, we had a coffee smell. Have I not talked about it? Have you told it? your listeners about this? I have not. What uh, have you been doing? So sorry, everyone. <laughs> we had a barista experience set up by the lovely Karen Bardsley, where we learned all about coffee, how it comes from a tree, how they get it into the your f- mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. From tree to your mouth. Um it's quite a process, might yeah, I say. Yeah. But the way that a filter batch brews is quite easily describable by what I'm saying it is. Filter coffee. It says what it does. So it's just a giant filter with... with it, it does what it says. It does what it says. Yeah. Just a giant filter with some coffee in there with some hot water that goes through it and it just, you know, becomes a, a delicious cup of heaven, really. A delicious dish. A delicious dish of cup of deliciousness seasons eating i was just saying though <laughs> i'm not a huge fan of the like sweet holiday drinks are you not like the peppermint latte or like- spice pumpkin spice latte 
I think you might turn a lot of your listeners away. I'm sorry, you guys. I don't mean to offend. If you love those drinks, like, more power to you, because it's that's getting in the holiday spirit. I I'm just, not a Scrooge, I promise. I just don't think we're really... Those don't really fit into our diet, do they? It's true. They don't. It's true. It's sadly true. I do... I am partial to a peppermint mocha, but not so much these days. <laughs> not so much. She's not feeling the peppermint mocha these days. Yeah, I just Maybe. found out how bad it was for you. I was like, oh, God. Uh, all the places that sell peppermint mochas are going to be mad that we just said that. Sorry, Starbucks. I think you'll manage. <laughs> uh, gotta love Should we ask Josh Starbucks. if we can... Uh, oh, is Josh gone? I don't know where he went. Where we gone? I was going to say, since it's not very busy, I think we could do some... Jump latte, behind the counter. Latte art. Oh, I'm really bad at latte art. That's know. very difficult. I also, shout out to well. baristas all over the world that can do lovely coffee art. You are a magician with milk. I saw one that a was... A milk magician. <laughs> a milk magician. Ooh. No, is that, a, is that a word? No, it is now. <laughs> a milk magician. You know, they've got all kinds of flowers and hearts and... A rabbit. I saw a rabbit. Oh, wow. That's yeah, that was a new one. I've never seen that When I did latte art, let me tell you, it was a cloud. Are you sure? It was a lovely, fluffy, big, big, circular cloud. How much are we allowed to say on this podcast? I mean, am I going to be heavily censored or... Well, if you say something that needs to be censored, you will be you will be censored and edited. Will it be bleeped or will it be completely removed? I mean, I think we could. I think we could do a bleep. All right. Okay. I'm not sure if I should. They might be young, influenceable people. Yeah. On the podcast. Um, but we had several interested. several interesting shapes in the latte. Ah, I see where you're going with this. Yeah. Purely accidental. It's all up to it's all up to imagination and interpretation of what the picture is of. <laughs> you know, I saw a cloud, and my cloud was awesome, and I was really proud of my cloud. So um, yes, it's very nice to have a fellow coffee lover uh, here to share in my love of coffee. I was saying I didn't start drinking coffee till like a few years ago when I was in Holland and I just couldn't stay awake. Oh yeah. So I put as much sugar and milk into the coffee as I could handle and just just got it down. I think that's kind of how I got introduced to coffee, to be honest. Hey, if you want to get into coffee, be take really it, tired. Be really <laughs> do, go find somewhere that you have to deal with jet lag because that'll do it. Yeah, I didn't have um, jet lag. What? what? She so, was just really tired by life. Just life it's just get you know it gets in the way yeah um my turn i was i was <laughs> uh it was pre-season for oh, the wps you know. my oh, very throwing first, it back my very first time in the wps um i was with sky blue and we went to north carolina for pre-season mm-hmm. and it was meant to be like warmer than new jersey but it was freezing and there was snow everywhere and we were having like three sessions a day and we were staying in this hotel and obviously we come back to the hotel after the sessions freezing cold yeah we were freezing but we were also like absolutely knackered so um, if you don't know what that means that means very tired (laughs) yeah i did not know what that meant when i first moved here it's fine um Um, people are learning things so that's good oh my computer just (laughs) froze make sure we're still recording here Uh, oh wrong Uh password have you introduced Josh yet? No, Josh, would you like to say hi to the podcast? Hey guys, so uh, oh, you want to come, come around, come this around. Side. We're, we're filming. Come on, this come on, take a seat. We're just having loads of fun here today. This is Josh. Hey, how's it going? Josh works at Tech. I work at Tech, yeah. He's, barista, he's all day, just, every day. He's more than just a barista. He Aww. is more than just a barista. He treats us very well. Yeah. You guys it's a lovely care. smiling face when we come in. Oh, so, thank you. We're going to have you on the podcast You're for a full already. episode. You're I don't think so. I'm a little nervous for that, but let's do it. Go on. Okay. Um... What's your favorite drink to make? Uh, my favorite drink to make, it's going to be a chai latte. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. I love coffee, but I love that Indian vibe. Okay. Like, okay. That's Indian vibe. Chai best. latte. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite drink to drink? Favorite drink to drink. Um, 
oat piccolo. What is that? Uh, it's like a real tiny milky based coffee drink. Oh, I'll yeah. have to try it. What's when you're a barista, you, you'll get one of them. Okay. O- Odie piccolo. Yeah. Odie piccolo. <laughs> I'm going to remember that. Well, thanks for your time. Anytime. Thanks for coming on. See you later. Why is it called that because it's so tiny? Yeah, is it called? Is it piccolo? I'll show you. Oh, well, uh, that's okay. Uh, continue your story. So, I, oh right, yeah. So um, I was really, really tired. We were doing three sessions a day, so we had to kind of like find a way. Yeah, we needed to sleep, but then after our nap, we'd go into another session. Oh, look at the little cup! Oh, it comes in a, a little. Piccolo. It's a little piccolo. <laughs> oh, it's piccolo. It's not even as big as my cheek. You put that all in your mouth at once. Thank you. Um, coffee shots. <laughs> coffee shots. Coffee shots. Give me a shot of coffee. Tech talk. Tech talk and uh, tech shots. Um, right, yeah. So we have a nap, have a session. Uh, we try to get ready for the session, and then, like, when you'd walk by towards, like, the main door, obviously you'd go through the lobby, and there was just, like, coffee machine and, like, you know. Yeah, normal, what you find at a hotel. Right. Yeah. And so we just started, like, oh, gosh, you know, like, we're going to have to stay awake, so we get, like, black coffee or, like, get the little coffee creamers and yep, put that yep. in and then take it with us on the bus and then go to training, <laughs> come back, and then you have a nap, and then, like, do it again for the third session. Oh. And so basically, I went like from... you're running the risk of over-caffeination. Well, I needed it, um, but I went from having no coffee to having, on average, like for a day at that rate probably not uh, medically suggested no, it, it, it wasn't sustainable it wasn't sustainable but it was what you needed for the but moment. I needed it you got through it I needed it for preseason alive and thriving yeah yeah it was surviving it was a, and th- surviving, surviving and surviving thriving. were you thriving or at that point were you just surviving I was I was thriving oh, she was thriving I was thriving thriving surviving on caffeine okay. well, and hey, adrenaline at least, at, always <laughs> at least it brought you into your love of coffee and football, yeah. And that too. Yeah. Okay, it's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. Jokes. But you're right. Yes, now I'm obsessed and I wish I would have never started drinking it. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of that way too. It's an expensive habit. Uh, well, it one, could be worse. Yeah. <laughs> one, I like to think that I... Uh, it, it's well worth the money for me. Um, but we are going to have Karen back on an episode, like an official episode. Right. Um, where we have some, some... She is just great with deep conversations has so much insight and knowledge Very that we deep. are gonna we're gonna tap into that noggin of hers um in a more formal way in the new year so you have that look to look forward to thank you for coming over my here, pleasure with us. give it here joining with us joining know, with us joining with us hopefully you know santa oh, might bring you some elocution lessons uh, for yeah. the new year bring me some some bigger <laughs> words oh come here darling oh. Love you. Love you too. Okay. All right, I'll leave you to it. Okay. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas from <laughs> Karen Bardsley. <Merry> Christmas. <laughs> bye bye. What a what a gem. Oh, she left. <laughs> what a gem she is. Well, um, that's really all I had for this episode. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed the um, surprise guest that we had. Wasn't expecting that. Uh, wasn't on the schedule, but uh, brought a little bit more fire to the episode. So uh, make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't. Uh, this episode has been brought to you by Tac Talks uh, Brewing with Becky episode 2. Uh, make sure you guys stay tuned for a Christmas special that we will, will be recorded in, in Colorado um, while I drink some lovely Tac coffee that I'm going to bring home. So I'm really excited for that. I'm going to try my best to get a really cool um, guest on with me in Colorado. Uh, I've got some good friends back there that I think you all would be very excited to hear from. So hoping to get that set up. Um, make sure you, like I said, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at uh, Janine Becky on Twitter and Janine Becky 4 on Instagram. Um, and stay tuned. Uh, stay in touch with all of my uh, vlogs and podcasts. And I look forward to uh, the next podcast episode. So thanks for joining me. Uh, thanks for listening. Um, and we will talk to you next time. Take care. Bye.